Not too long. Right. Hey, good evening. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I think we're about ready to get things started. We're ready. Hi, my name is Jeff Zimmerman, and I have the pleasure of being the dean of the Breach School of Business. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I hope you had the opportunity to maybe connect with some old friends, maybe make some new ones. We're hoping that um, maybe as the evening wears on, we'll have an opportunity to do a little networking again. I wanted to say a few words to our Breach alumni. Thanks for spending some time with us. You're welcome to engage with our students and faculty at any time. We want our beautiful new building, the O'Reilly Enterprise Center. We want you to know that you're welcome here. We want you involved in our activities. We want our alumni speaking in our classrooms, mentoring our students, and engage in the important work that we do to educate the next generation of breach leaders. You're welcome to stop by my office, bring, bring your thoughts, bring your ideas, or just say, hey, I'd like to be involved. Um, to our breach students, you've made a big step. Congratulations on being here. Opportunities to network and engage with our alumni are important in helping you prepare for the future that you want and the future that you envision. As we hold Breach Networking and other events moving into the future, come, engage, take the time to engage, to network, to seek mentors in the business professionals that are around us and in our community. It will greatly benefit you as you seek your path in the business world. Now this evening, we are very fortunate to have Mr. Gary Schaefer with us to share some words on a topic that is very important to Drury and to Breach. And we are very thankful and grateful that Forbes continues to support our school and our students. Mr. Schaefer will be introduced this evening by Kristen Wanamaker Bright, a CPA, a Forvis a partner with Forvis and a graduate of Drury University with a BA in Business Administration and Accounting from the Breach School of Business. Yeah, let's welcome Kristen. Good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Kristen Watermaker Bright, and I'm a partner with Forvis located right here in Springfield, Missouri. And like you said, I am a proud graduate of Drury, class of 2003. I was involved in the SIF team here, formerly Enactus, as well as a member of the volleyball team. And I can tell you when I look back that my time at Drury completely prepared me for the career that I have today. Some of you may be familiar with Forvis, and some of you may not be, and that's okay. We are a newly merged firm. We merged two legacy CPA firms in June of 2022, BKD and DHG Dixon Hughes Goodman. We are now the eighth largest CPA firm. We employ over 5,700 personnel, as well as over 550 partners and principals. And we have one of our partners here today, and I have the pleasure of introducing Gary Schaefer. Gary serves as the managing partner for our Southern Missouri Practice Unit, which includes our Springfield, Joplin, and Branson, Missouri offices. He is responsible for the administration, oversight, operations of nearly 380 personnel, and we serve approximately 7,000 businesses and clients individually. And one of the cool things, we've got some of our you know, Southern Missouri team members here we're very proud of. Um, even though we're a very large firm, our Southern Missouri practice unit is the largest practice unit in the firm. We may be slightly nudged out now by Dallas and Fort Worth, but you know they also have a population of six to seven million. So you know, if we're nudged out by them, that's okay. Um, however, prior to becoming our managing partner, Gary served as an audit partner and leader for the Commercial Products and Services Group in Southern Missouri. 
For more than 20 years, he provided audit and advisory services to retailers, manufacturers, and wholesalers. And he became Southern Missouri's managing partner in 2018. He is also a member of the American Institute of CPAs, Missouri Society of CPAs, and the Institute of Management Accountants. He also leads the peer reviews Forbes performs for large national firms. He also serves as a member of the National Peer Review Committee of AICPA. Gary's going to touch upon in his speech the tradition and the foundation that our firm provides to our community um, and gives back um, in our volunteer positions. Gary currently serves as the president of the board for the Business Development Corporation of the Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce, treasurer for the Springfield Downtown Council of Champions, the executive committee of the board of the Breast Cancer Foundation of the Ozarks, and is a member of the board of the Chamber of Commerce and other community boards. He also serves as the executive advisory committee of the College of Business for Missouri State University and on the advisory board of the Ozarks Community Technical College for Advanced Manufacturing. He previously served as the president of the board of the American Red Cross of Southern Missouri and an officer of the Rody Club of Springfield. And in all of his spare time, after all of that volunteering, he also serves on Forvis's governing board, which is the equivalent of our board of directors. Gary was also a member of the leadership class of 24. The Springfield Business Journal acknowledged him in 2012 and its 40 under 40 award and is one of the Springfield's men of the year. Gary has been my managing partner for the lifespan of my partner career. And I know Gary as a leader who leads consistently with integrity, who guides his team with intention rather than pushing, who shows he cares for people rather than just results, and who leads by example. Please help me welcome Gary Schaefer. Wow, thank you, Kristen. I, I don't know if my remarks are gonna live up to that introduction uh, at all, uh, but uh, thank you for that, and thanks to Drury and Dr. Zimmerman and the Breach School of Business uh, for inviting me to be with you here this evening. Even though I'm an accountant and public speaking is not my passion, it is a privilege and uh, I'm excited about being here this evening. I've prepared some thoughts and when I've finished, I hope to leave some time for questions at the end. As I was visiting with Dr. Zimmerman about the current initiatives of the Breach School of Business, one thing that really resonated with me is the focus that Drury has on preparing its students for engagement, not just in their future business careers, but also with the community. I'd like to take a few moments this evening to share with you my perspective on the unique opportunity that we have as business professionals and leaders to create a positive impact. To make a meaningful difference uh, is something any of us can do, but it does require us to be intentional with how we invest our time and our energy. I'm very fortunate that throughout my career, I've had opportunities to witness firsthand the significant impact that business leaders can have on their organizations and on their communities. At different times, I've had the privilege of working alongside entrepreneurs, leaders of large corporations, dynamic nonprofit board members, elected officials, and great civic leaders. I'd like to share with you a few things that I've learned from those experiences. First, however, I'd like to frame up the discussion with some perspective from the organization I'm most familiar with, which is Forbus. Forbus, uh, as Kristen mentioned, is an accounting and professional services firm. We've been serving clients for 100 years. We were originally founded as Baird, Kurtz, and Dobson here in Springfield in 1923. Over our 100 years, we've expanded our services that we provide to clients, and we are now the number eight accounting firm in the United States. In the year 2000, we shortened our name from Baird, Kurtz, and Dobson down to BKD, CPAs and Advisors. And last year, as Kristen mentioned, we joined forces with another leading national accounting firm, Dixie Hughes Goodman, to become four of us. We now have 70 offices across the United States and several international locations as well. Now, the name four of us, you may be wondering, why four of us? Well, I'm glad you asked. Our name is comprised of two words, forward and vision. While changing our name after 100 years has been a difficult adjustment for some of us, the new name has rapidly grown on us because it truly captures the way we go about 
serving our clients. Our focus is forward on what comes next for our clients and our communities. Using our vision, we aspire to build upon the many things that made our firm successful and our clients successful for the past hundred years. The purpose of Forbus is to help those we serve unlock their full potential. Those we serve is obviously our clients, but it's also our employees and the communities where we live. Our mission is to build remarkable careers and provide unmatched client experiences through an uncommon commitment to excellence. The reason I share these phrases with you is to help illustrate that although we're an accounting and advisory firm, a big part of what we're about is building remarkable careers for the professionals that we work with. We believe in helping our people unlock their full potential and in so doing, it benefits not just our clients, but also the communities where we are. So for me, learning to be a business professional in my firm involved having the leaders that I looked up to encourage me and support me in becoming involved in the community. Four of us sets the tone to encourage our employees to engage in the community through our corporate efforts. Each of our 70 locations around the country plug into their communities in unique ways. Here in Springfield, our team comes together around support of the United Way through an annual fundraiser, being involved in the Day of Caring, and many other activities. We also partner with Boyd Elementary to support the students and learning outcomes there. And we sponsor a number of local events and fundraisers to get our team members plugged in to supporting their local communities. To make a deeper collective impact, over 20 years ago, our firm founded what's now called the Forbes Foundation. Our partners and employees annually contribute to the foundation. Since inception, we have funded grant requests here in Southern Missouri totaling more than $3 million. Our employees submit grant requests to the foundation. For projects to qualify, our employee must be volunteering with an organization that's requesting the grant, and the project must create a lasting impact. So, the passion of our employees directs the impact our foundation has on our communities. That last point is key. Here in Southern Missouri, Forbes has over 500 team members, 380 in the practice units that I manage, but then also many of our national office people are based here as well. That's many different connection points for our community. We actively encourage our team to identify one or more causes they're passionate about and then find a way to make a positive impact. As a professional, there are many different ways we can make an impact on the communities we're part of. Whether through philanthropy, volunteer effort, or advocacy, our business education and skills, your business education and skills, position you to make positive contributions to advance causes that you care about. Like with any important decision, when considering the impact that you'd like to have on the community, it's important to start with a why question. Why get involved? That's a simple question that sometimes we either fail to properly consider or we overcomplicate the answer. From a business perspective, getting involved with the community is a way for professionals to expand your network. You can meet new people and grow relationships with others, which can lead to positive business outcomes. Growing your personal network can open new opportunities for you individually as well as for your organization. Being involved in the community often provides you with opportunities for personal growth as well. You might learn new things that you just don't get the opportunity to through your normal uh, work responsibilities. You can continue to build new skills or practice using skills in new ways. From a personal perspective, helping your community, of course, can provide considerable satisfaction and personal fulfillment. Advancing a cause you care about is a meaningful accomplishment that you can be and should be proud of. For example, one of the first boards that I joined during my professional career was the American Red Cross's Regional Board. At that stage of my career, building my professional network was very important, and that board was excellent for that. Not only did I get to meet some dynamic business leaders I would never have otherwise known, I also uh, made some friendships that lasted long beyond my tenure on that board. I learned a lot about how boards work, and ultimately, expanded my role to become the treasurer and then president of that board to 
contribute to that organization more significantly. One of my most memorable years of service on that board was being present in 2011, the year a significant tornado impacted our Joplin community. While thousands of volunteers provided life-changing relief work, I'm proud that I was able to use my skills and abilities to help organize and facilitate making a positive impact in that time of crisis. The truth is, the best opportunities to seek out are where there's alignment between good business reasons and good personal reasons to become involved. Those are the opportunities where you can most meaningfully contribute and where you're deeply motivated to deliver your best effort. On the other hand, in situations where your business and personal goals are not aligned with the community involvement opportunity, you can soon find yourself struggling to maintain and sustain your commitment. Unfortunately, I've seen situations where misalignment can cause stress and even disappointment. For example, imagine that you're a young professional who's a little shy, but enjoys volunteering, making a difference one-on-one -on -one with underserved youth. And you do a great job of that but then you're asked to serve on the board of that organization. Members of that board are expected to individually raise a significant amount of money and they're required to do public speaking on behalf of the organization. If you're not at a stage in your career where you want to sign up for that kind of responsibility, that might be a misaligned opportunity. When you consider the wide array of needs in your community, it can be a little overwhelming. Once you start saying yes to opportunities that you're well aligned with, you will quickly find that more opportunities will present themselves. Just like in your professional career, burnout from overextending yourself in the community can become very real. Therefore, it's important for you to curate your community involvement thoughtfully so that you can balance making a positive impact in the community with continuing to grow your success in your career at work, professionally, and also at, uh, in your personal life. To avoid becoming overwhelmed by the tide of opportunities, this is where being intentional is especially critical. When I'm thinking about how I manage my involvement and spend my time and energy, I'm looking for where I can make the greatest impact. I think about the different types of organization and causes and try to balance my efforts intentionally with sustainability in mind. Aspects I consider when evaluating a volunteer commitment, the organization's scope is it local or regional or national? The type of organization, humanitarian, professional, or civic. Levels of engagement, you can be a volunteer, you can serve on the board, or you can be an executive on the board and play a significant role in the leadership of the organization. Time commitment, is that expected to be weekly or monthly or quarterly? All good things to evaluate. That time commitment factor is especially critical. A big consideration for what commitments you can take on needs to start with what time can you afford to give. Before you commit to a role, you need to understand the time required and ensure that your employer supports you investing that time away from work if that's what's required. And we're not just talking about professional time though. Organizational commitments can also impact your family uh, and other significant uh, aspects of your life. And don't forget you. Uh, you only have so many hours in the day. You need to ensure that you have time for all the things that are important to you so that you can give your best to all the roles you play. The specific organizations that I'm involved with and the level of my engagement have really transitioned over time. I'll try to illustrate what I'm talking about. Here is what my community involvement commitments looked like 10 years ago when I was leading our commercial audit practice. They're arranged from left to right uh, by the scope of the organization, so local, regional, national. Uh, the size of the circle indicates the intensity of my involvement. So the big circles I indicated I played a key role, uh, such as being an officer on the board. A smaller circle represented the lesser time commitment. I apologize, I have to have visuals when, I, when I'm uh, presenting things. So here is how my responsibilities transitioned over a, a five year period, so five years ago. At this time, I was transitioning into the role of managing partner that I have now for Forbes here in Southern Missouri. You can see that some of the organizations I was involved with um, uh, have changed and the levels of involvement changed. But I tried to be intentional about keeping a balance between humanitarian, professional, and civic roles because that was important to me. And here's how my responsibilities have shifted 
to my current involvement today. As you can see, the mix of organizations and my relative intensive involvement have shifted over time for, to some more regional and national roles, but I've been intentional about maintaining a balance that aligns with my priorities. As I complete a span of service with one organization, that provides me an opportunity to consider, consider strategically how to leverage my next involvement. Sometimes when I become excited about adding a new way to help the community, I have to remind myself to be patient and see through my current commitments with excellence before I jump into the next opportunity to serve. For example, last month I was approached uh, by a colleague that I serve on the board with uh, about being nominated to serve on the board of another organization. Now, it was a great honor uh, to be nominated, but considering my current commitments to my firm and, and the community, now is not the right time. However, I was able to identify another Forbes colleague that this was a great opportunity for, who has a passion for that organization and who has the capacity to really lean in and uh, contribute in a positive way. I've been doing this for a while now, so I've been fortunate to serve in many different ways. Not everyone will be positioned to have the same level of engagement. How you go about making an impact will be unique to you and it will vary throughout your career. When you're thinking about your ability to make a difference, keep in mind that you are always in a position to be a leader, regardless of your title or your role with an organization or on a team. Forbes.com defines leadership as a process of social influence which maximizes the efforts of others towards achievement of a goal. If you think about that definition, being a leader does not require you to be in a position of authority. It doesn't require any special skills or knowledge. Leadership isn't necessarily a personality trait that you inherit, nor do you have to be struck by lightning or bitten by a radioactive spider to acquire the superpower to lead. Rather, a leader is someone who sees a goal and tries to help others move toward it. Each of us can help maximize the efforts of others toward achieving a goal, but how we help will evolve throughout our careers. Many of us will start our business leadership journey by collaborating on a project. This being a business school, I know you probably all had the opportunity to work on a group project. For introverted, introverted accounting majors, just hearing the phrase group project can be enough to elicit groans. However, there is nothing like a great dysfunctional group project to teach you valuable lessons about life and leadership. So, think about a memorable group project that you've been a part of. What makes for a great group leader? Sometimes a group project gets done as a solo effort. The person who did all the work probably thinks of themselves as the group leader, but they're not really. They were the leading contributor, and that is not the same thing. Sometimes discussion in a group can become dominated by a person who deems herself or himself the best qualified, most knowledgeable, or most passionate. Usually, just being the most vocal is not necessarily the same as being the most qualified to lead. In fact, it can be the opposite. The most successful groups are typically those where each member contributes something meaningful. That doesn't happen by accident. The person who keeps the assignment parameters in mind and consistently engages each member to contribute in a way that moves the project forward, that is an effective leader. Sometimes the path forward can be difficult to navigate. Whether in your job or in the community, there are many different ways to contribute to help move toward a goal. Let's discuss a few. Be an example. Consistently contribute in whatever role you have to set a great example and encourage others to step up and match your performance. When I was a new associate at my firm, BKD back then, I remember being inspired by the consistent effort and attention to detail demonstrated by one of my peers. Now, 25 years later, Mike Wolf continues to set a great example for professionals in our firm uh, and is a, a leader. He's our chief risk officer. Ask questions when others do not. Sometimes the team is headed down the wrong path. Ask thought-provoking questions rather than just accept the status quo. This can be what's needed to spark a productive conversation. One of the roles that I serve 
at Forvis is as a member of our firm's board. I'm grateful that our firm has some brilliant leaders. One way that I try to help them is to challenge assumptions and ask good questions. Fortunately, they usually have great answers. Be a teacher. Knowledge is power and sharing knowledge is empowering others. The knowledge you share equips others to succeed at their tasks and this is an opportunity to multiply the contribution that you can make. Be a cheerleader. Build consensus. Coordinate co collaboration and encourage action excuse me, to help turn a good idea into a great accomplishment. Sometimes what separates a great plan on the drawing board from a great story in the history books is the energy and enthusiasm that sparks action. Be an advocate. Sometimes someone needs more than a coach or a cheerleader to take that next step forward. An advocate is someone who uses their position, their connections, their credibility on behalf of someone else. Each of us have benefited from others who believed in us and put us in a position to be successful. When we pay that forward, we're helping to maximize the efforts of others. There are many different ways you can do this. Back in 2017, a colleague in another office in our firm reached out to me with questions as they prepared to meet with the board of a prospective client the next day. I had worked with similar organizations in the past and I had some specialized expertise in that industry. I could have just answered those questions to coach him up, to prepare him for that meeting and then cheer him on. I knew my colleague would provide excellent service to this new organization. But I also knew that his resume lacked some specific experience that the owners of that organization were looking for. So I called up my wife and asked, how would you like to go for a drive with me to lovely Jasper, Indiana? My wife doesn't usually go on business trips with me, but this was going to impact some plans we had in place. So it's always a good idea to get buy-in before you commit to volunteering your time. It was only a six hour drive through some lovely fall foliage and by showing up and becoming part of the team, I was able to be an advocate to help my colleague be in a position to ultimately create an unmatched experience for a great organization and they're still a key client of our firm today. So then, all of us have the power to make an impact today, right where we are. Regardless of the stage of your professional career or your role in the organization, you can spark positive change. Whether you are contributing to the success of your workplace or advancing a community cause that you care about, by being intentional with your involvement, you can create a lasting impact. Thank you for the privilege of talking with, with you this evening. I'd be happy to respond to questions that anyone might have. Yes. So if I understood your question correctly, kind of talking about balancing the needs of the clients with, with the role with other organizations or with, with uh, I guess, um, the public interest. Help me, help me understand what you're... Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, uh, I was slow on the uptake there. Wanted to make sure I understood the question. So, um, yeah, so uh, it, as a professional, uh, uh, 
you have an obligation to both follow the professional code of ethics associated with your profession uh, and just good solid business ethics in general as well as then of course when you're engaged to perform a service for an, uh, a client or organization you have a responsibility to, to do a great job providing that service and so um, you know I guess I, I'll speak as an accountant, uh, the way we do this uh, as accountants, I think it's equally applicable if you're in law or medicine or other fields, each of which has a unique code of ethics. Um, you know, I, I think it, it really starts um, with uh, remembering that uh, our responsibility is, uh, uh, I guess, our, our doing something ethically uh, is always the right answer. And so, um, you know, our clients hire us uh, to perform an audit, uh, but they trust that we're going to do it the right way and uh, follow professional standards and, and comply with the, the requirements that are incumbent upon uh, um, the profession. So um, it can be difficult when um, doing, uh, providing a client service involves giving them difficult information. So in other words, telling them things they don't want to hear, uh, and that can be hard. However, what, what I have found in my career is that you know, if, you, if you have the privilege of working with clients that, that want to do things the right way, then um, uh, being honest and, and you know, I guess giving them uh, the bad news when that's necessary is also uh, a part of that role. So I, I'm grateful that throughout my career I've had good leaders that demonstrated to me that hey, you know there is there is no wrong way to do the right thing. <laughs> Always uh, uh, put our uh, you know your code of conduct and ethics first, and then do your very best to uh, serve those that are, uh, hire you as best as you can. So sorry, I feel like I I didn't really articulate that answer very well, but that's yeah. yeah. I appreciate the question. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. If you didn't hear that, uh, uh, it was how how do you best take advantage of your time as a student to prepare you uh, for uh, having the opportunity to be in, engaged in the community later. Uh, a number of things I can think of there. Uh, first of all, uh, you're at a stage in your life where you're going to be exposed to a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different ideas. There are many different organizations on campus, and I encourage you explore those. Find about find out what you might have a passion for, uh, because ultimately, you know, there's any number of opportunities to become involved out there. Uh, but really, the ones that are most beneficial are, are where you have a passion. And so, you're at a great stage in your your career right now uh, to determine what you may be interested in the investing more in later. It becomes hard once you are out in the professional world. I've got some colleagues back here uh, that work at Forvis, and they can tell you that um, you, you get busy. Uh, with both um, your work commitments and your personal life. And so um, now you're at a great time to really explore and figure out those things that you're passionate about. Um, right now, you may be able to contribute as a volunteer. Later in your career, you may be able to have a much more significant impact for a cause that you care about. Yes, sir. Oh. I like the story about Jasper, Indiana. How have you balanced family and career? That is, that, that is a great one. Uh, and I will tell you, that's, that's where I learned to be really intentional. Uh, I learned that um, not every great opportunity is a great opportunity right now <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, the bigger impact you have, the more time it takes, inevitably. Uh, and so uh, I, I learned, and, and I made sure to include that in my story. I did ask before I agreed to volunteer. Uh, and, um, you know, when you have others in your life that your decisions impact, you need to take that into account. You really do. And so um, I'm, I, I probably look like, if you look at my little circles that I put on the chart, it looks like I have a lot going on, and in fairness, I do. 
but some of that is my role with my organization. So I'm, I'm a local leader. I, I help drive us to plug into the community, so I'm plugged in myself. Um, you know, but not everybody uh, will be that involved, and you've got to balance that out. And it's more important to do one thing really well than do a whole bunch of things. And that includes uh, being what your family needs you to be. So with all these uh, organizations that you're involved with, how do you decide which ones to prioritize? Yeah, that, that changes over time. Um, the good news is that most organizations, I mean, you can volunteer, volunteer forever, but as far as like a, a high level of involvement, like serving on a board, most of them have term limits. <laughs> so uh, as uh, I wind up uh, completing a term, that's when I really stop and think, okay, um, I, yeah, I finished up that obligation, I could take on something else. I, I really try to think selectively about, okay, of the opportunities I've heard about or the, the other places I'm passionate about making a difference, where should I plug in? And so um, that, that's something I definitely encourage to be intentional. All right, we had, uh, had more questions than I anticipated here. I'm happy to stick around, yes sir. Another one for you, Gary. Yeah. Um, a lot of companies, in the state of market, uh, from a strategy standpoint, sorry, from a strategy standpoint, uh, uh, elect to take their community engagement in a certain direction. That's just a forward kind of philosophy around their philosophy. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, this four of us have a philosophy around our philanthropy. So yes, um, our philosophy is that we want our, the passion of our, and engagement of our people to drive our, our corporate giving. So that's, how, that's why we set up our foundation the way we did, where our employees um, have to be a volunteer with an organization in order to bring a, a grant request. Uh, and um, uh, that, has, that has been that's really helped us grow that culture of, of allowing our employees to direct our engagement. That said, we do things as a group too. And so, um, you know, when I think about my, my team here in Southern Missouri, you know, we've got hundreds of us, we support hundreds of different causes, and I encourage each person to go plug into those causes. But collectively, we do some things together as well. So that's, as I mentioned, the United Way is one where we as a team agree that that's one thing we're gonna come together and do, plus then we're all gonna go do our own things and we're gonna support each other in doing that. Great question. Okay, well, I'm gonna put in a plug here before I give the mic back to Dr. Zimmerman. Since we're all here together, I've got a number of brilliant uh, four of us team members kind of seated at the back of the room here. Uh, and so if you're a student, I encourage you to seek one of them out and uh, uh, connect with them uh, since they're alumni that are back here in the room. Uh, and uh, also connect with each other, and I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions that I couldn't hear from up here. Thank you very much. Thank you. We should probably give it one more round of applause. It's a very, very good message. I hope you listen. We need to be involved and we need to be intentional. With that said, I am going to invite you to be intentional um, by networking a little bit right now. We don't have to leave the room right now. There's still some refreshments in the back. Please enjoy. Good night.